Hello, this is a short video to explain to you some strategies to work in groups. I know this can be challenging to work in groups because it's easier to work on your own, but it's very useful and that's something you will do uh, most of your life. So I think it's a good thing that you start as soon as possible. Ready? Let's go. As an appetizer, I invite you to watch this video, which shows just three examples of how working in groups can be helpful. I know that working in groups can be challenging, not only for you, but also for me, but has also some advantages. The advantage is that you can concentrate on the things you are better at. For instance, for a group project in the class, you can think on different roles. You can think in an organizer, a person that coordinates the whole group, trying to visualize what is going on and assigning activities to each of the members. You can have a researcher, someone do, who goes deep into the information to look for data, information, and so on. You can have a report writer, some, someone who is better at writing and who likes to write. So then could be in charge to write the presentation of the report. Then uh, not everybody is, feels very comfortable to speak in public, but I'm sure you find one of your team members which, who is better or who feels much more comfortable to speak out in public. And last but not least, if you have to generate video and you have to generate uh, presentations, uh, also there are some people who tend to be a bit better in trying to put all the information together. So you can see that you have, have different roles for the group. Here I want to show you some personal strategies. So to think in some elements that can help you to, to work in groups. The first one is to report. Second one is prejudge. Third one is to understand and learn. And fourth one is to be self-awareness. Let's go one by one. To build rapport. To build rapport means to socialize. Basically, uh, very often the group members might not be your friends, but still you have to interact with them, you have to work with them together. So sometimes it's useful to, uh, social, to do some social activities with those group members in order to feel more uh, comfortable working with them. So then at the end of the day, it's going to be easier to work in groups. One example, I mean, if you are working with your group uh, members, even though they might not be your friends, uh, is it possible that one day you just go for a coffee and then you can have a chat about the project or maybe about something else? Second one is prejudge. I mean, it's very tentative and everybody of us uh, prejudge. So we have to minimize as much as possible. Basically, to prejudge is to consider other people abnormal, weird, wrong, uh, before actually knowing them. So here are two keys for uh, avoiding prejudge as much as possible is to respect others because everyone is different so other people or their group members are going to be different than you are and second is try to understand them try to understand why they act the way they act so one example could be if you have a very shy person in a group he or she might not be able to speak up very easily but if you create the right atmosphere for he or she to speak up, you may find the right uh, approach. So if you just think this person is weird because doesn't speak, it's maybe you are not trying to understand what is behind. And maybe the reason is because he's a very shy person. The third strategy is to try to understand and learn. If we take the previous example of having a shy person into a group, if you try to understand that person, uh, you are going to be aware of the differences and this is going to lead to have a much better working environment. So my recommendation here is try to challenge yourself about trying to understand others because you will be learning from that process. And the fourth strategy is self-awareness, which means to be more aware about how you are involved into the group. So if we take again the example of this very shy team member, if somebody in the group uh, treat him or her as lazy, 
he or she might not be very happy, right? Because he or she is not very lazy, but he's a bit shy. So just be aware of those things that might bother, that might push others' buttons. And it's very important when you do that, that you maintain your own and others' dignity. Here I would like to tell you about losing fair, which is very typical in the traditional Chinese culture, which applies to other cultures as well. It's basically, I don't want to be left on uh, bad situations when I am in a group. So if you tell me the bad things about myself while being in a group, while being in the middle of the class, I will feel very uncomfortable. So in a group, try to avoid that always possible, because I think it's going to be a good uh, strategy. So the summary of the four strategies, to build rapport was one of them, which means to socialize with your group members, even though they are not your friends. To avoid prejudice, to avoid saying, well, this person is stupid, this person is bad, before actually knowing them. So it's better to try to understand and learn from themselves or from yourself to see what is uh, going on. So the need is to have self-awareness of what are the things that really uh, matter to you and the things that really bother you, which also could be for the other uh, team members. Thank you very much for listening.